Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part five of building Iron Spider-Man, the real robot, which was going to be an Iron Man suit that walks along by itself, but I decided to do Spider-Man instead. So it's a real walking, talking robot that walks along with animatronic features. And that's built on my Robot X platform, which you can see more of in my channel if you check back for that series. Last time I built a web shooter into its left hand that actually fires a web with a spring, or at least a piece of string, although it would appear most people would rather I'd taken the easy option and put silly string in there. I didn't think I wanted to do that because I thought it was too easy, but there we go anyway, so now it does actually do the pose and fires the string. The other hand I haven't decided what to do with yet, I might make a dexterous hand with fingers and everything that move. But we've got a few issues to sort out this time, you'll have noticed last time it's quite jittery, um, so I need to try and do some motion smoothing in code, but I also noticed one of the gears was broken on um, actually on the right arm, which is why it's particularly bad. And that happened when it fell over during the walking testing, and I hadn't actually noticed that gear got broken, so I'm going to replace that today, and we'll see how it looks. We're also going to add some more cosmetic panels and some other features. So that is the broken gear, and we can tell that, because if I move the arm, it just spins freely, and uh, you can maybe see it's actually cracked and falling apart there, so I'm going to replace that with a new one. As usual, my gears have a grub screw in and a captive nut to attach to the shaft, and they're normally fine. This is ABS in 80% infill, so it should be pretty tough. Right, so that's nice and rock solid again. So we need to write some code to smooth the values that actually get to the actuators, and I found this uh, thing called Smooth on the Arduino website, which is basically a uh, filter here. So I've got the code in my Arduino IDE, and I've actually programmed an Arduino that sat on the bench next to me. So some of this code is there to uh, basically ramp up the filter as it starts. Yeah, we'll actually fix that at a value, so we don't need to worry about that. And also to generate a square wave, and that's the wave that's going to be smoothed in this example. This part prints out the values. The actual thing that does the smoothing is this function here. And even then, the if and the else if are there to make sure we don't get any funny conditions uh, when the value is zero. So the actual piece that does the smoothing is effectively one line of code here which looks like it divides up the value as it gets closer to its target and then basically means we move the output in smaller and smaller increments until we get there. So we can look at the values of the input and the output using the serial monitor. Um, unfortunately it's not very easy to see what's going on, you can see there's uh, some values shooting by that look like they might be changing, so we can use the serial plotter instead, which is a much better way to uh, actually graph the values. So we start off with hardly any filtering, and you can see that both of the waves are together. The yellow wave is actually our output, and you can see that it's starting to get curved off on each response now, so the value is, of the filter is getting higher, it's getting more filtered, so we can see here that in fact, as time goes on, the yellow wave decelerates as it reaches its target, and that's how we're going to smooth out the motion of the robot, where the blue wave is the demand from the joystick. So I now have a servo running uh, doing that output, which you can see, so we can see the actual physical output. I'm just going to click off the uh, serial plotter again, and I've actually divided and scaled the values, so the bottom is now the blue, which is the demand, and the yellow at the top is the smoothed motion. So as this gets more and more smooth, you should be able to see the servo decelerating and moving much more slowly as it gets to its target. So it starts to become apparent around now, and you can see that's getting a lot smooth, apart from the servo wobble because it's not fixed down, but it's trying its best, and then it goes back to scratch again. So I've just fixed the servo down so it doesn't wobble, and I've fixed the stick to it so you can see the motion better at the end of the stick, and I've tuned the values a little bit and left the filter value constant. I've speeded up the uh, input there a little bit, that square wave, and we can see now quite clearly that it accelerates quickly and slows down towards the end of the cycle. So now we can apply that function to the robot. So I've applied that function, that reusable block of code, to each of the axes in the arm and the head, also the eyes there, so they do actually blink and there's a bit of acceleration and deceleration, so they're not just open and shut. Uh, we could smooth that even further if we wanted to have more effect. But uh, basically, I'm much happier with the motion now. We've got the arms and the head tied together. But I'm much happier with uh, what he's doing there. I could make the head move a little bit further still, but, uh, you know, I'm not too unhappy with that. He seems to um, work quite well there. He's quite a good animatronic robot now. So um, you'll see most of the jitter's gone. There is still some mechanical wobble, of course, which is kind of unavoidable. 
And if I smash the stick around too much, you know, we can still introduce wobble. So it's still responsive, of course, that initial reaction to the demand is quick, but it's the end of the motion that's smooth. So if I was to just push it and let the stick go, you can see it's quite a smooth motion, apart from where he's wobbling on his feet. So um, the head could move further, but um, it's pretty good right now. He's sort of... Uh, can be made to look in the way his uh, arms move, so he's a bit more like he's fighting, and he can make some quite nice smooth motions if I use all of those three axes. And of course the uh, firing of the web still works, if we just bring his arm up there, and I'll just point it uh, that way a little bit. Yep, there it goes. And the only axis I didn't smooth out with that algorithm is the popping out of the web, because otherwise it doesn't have quite enough power to push it out and miss his fingers. But other than that, I'm uh, pretty happy with the motion that we've got now. Right, I think it's time to do something about Spider-Man's eyes. So I want to make some white lenses in the eyes, possibly some that I can light up red, so they need to be pretty thin, and so we're going to put this white lens in and that's going to be held on a bracket in the middle of the head there. So if I hide that side of the head, we can see that that should fit neatly there behind the eye shutter mechanism. Hopefully that's still got space for the servos and everything to move, and that should be pretty good. Right, here they are. So I've printed those in uh, basically a 1mm thick PLA, and that's the bracket, so that fits inside the head, and the two eye lenses should align like that, and they should come right to the middle, so they look a bit of a funny angle, but that in fact is how the eyes are in the head, so they should fit perfectly behind the eyes. Right, I've fitted one eye lens there, so we can see that uh, that seems to look okay, and I just wanted to test out the, um, the eyelid shutter mechanism to check that works, so uh, let's just turn the head around a little bit. Yep, seems to work all right. So my servos don't catch or anything, and that looks all right. There is still that grinding of the plastic against itself, and that's just the build lines in the plastic, but the shutter appears to be completely clear of the lens. So pretty happy with that. So I've attached a bit of tape to the other lens that I'll peel off afterwards and that allows me to handle it to poke it in because there's no other way to do it. Of course what I should have done is had screw holes going from the outside of the head inwards so I could screw the two halves to the brackets rather from the inside outwards which is why it's so tricky to disassemble now. So they both fitted in the end, the other one wasn't too bad so uh... There we go, we've now got uh, the uh, full head capability. But let's think about whether we can make those illuminate now, in red mostly. I want to illuminate those lenses and make them fairly diffused, so instead of sticking LEDs right behind them, I'm going to stick an LED on this block here, uh, which I'm going to print either side and stick on the head stick. So um, if I were to extrude this out, it should point directly in the middle of the eye lens, or near enough. We can always turn it around and fine tune it and that means that the LED should cast evenly over the eye lens there and we're going to put a couple of surface mount LEDs on each side. So I've mounted my LEDs on blocks, there's two of them, one is here and the other one is sitting just here at the moment and I've wired those at the moment so they trigger when I do the eye motion and those just light up red so I'm going to mount those right up inside the head there and hopefully that'll be enough to illuminate the eyes. I'm not sure how much leakage there's going to be through the rest of the head though. Well, they're mounted right up in there. Those are the white lenses getting illuminated, so uh, hopefully that'll be pretty good. So I've dimmed the lights a bit because otherwise the camera doesn't pick it up very well, although it is pretty bright, so uh, let's give that a go. Well, the eyes definitely illuminate but um, obviously the rest of the head is uh, lighting up like a Christmas tree as well. So I've extended the LEDs on these long sticks, so they are literally uh, just behind that lens there. We might still have to paint the inside of the head with uh, some black paint or something at some point, but hopefully that will give me more localization on the eye lens and less eye leakage. So, uh, well, not that much better really. There is, um, in real life, it's a bit hard to see on the camera, there is um, more focus on the eye lenses but uh, you can still, you still see quite a lot of leakage there, so I guess I do need to paint the inside of the head matte black. At some point I need to do cosmetic finishing on this, 
and put the spider web pattern on and all those things. So at that point, I'll probably take the head to bits. I may well even make holes in the outside to attach it together from the outside onto the frame as opposed to the inside. So um, at that point, we can make some adjustments, perhaps bonding the LEDs directly to the back of the lenses. Uh, but for now, I'm going to leave it as it is. Right, I think it's time to put some more panels on Spider-Man. So he looks a bit funny without the back panels that I've drawn here from the side, because he's kind of empty at the back. So I've designed this back for him. Obviously it's twin tone, just like Spider-Man, and we'll print that in red and blue filament, but I'll probably paint all of it or something at the end anyway. So we've got a hole here in the shoulder, which is where the emergency stop button is, and a mirrored hole here. There's still a bit of 2020 that we can mount something on, and that's gonna be for a very special accessory in the future. If I hide a couple of these panels, we can see there's a split in the middle, there's a joiner that bridges them, and these are going to attach in a similar way to the chest panel where they're on a kind of hook thing uh, that slots on, so I can remove that pretty easily to get inside to the Arduino and the battery pack that's inside there. So here are my back panels, obviously these two get bonded together to make the split in the red and blue and I've got this joiner in the middle to put them together. So I'm going to try and stick these together and put them on the joiner and we'll place those on the shoulders and see how it looks. So here's the back panel with both pieces glued together, that fits over the emergency stop and there's the same space on the other side for mounting a very special accessory that's coming up in the future. So I still need um, some cover on the back of the neck here for all the wires and gears and that should fit neatly on there. And I've got these mounts either side which are detachable. And that is this mount here which I'm going to glue on to this piece and the blue piece below it. And that just lifts off the same as the chest plate and pulls out. And we've got one of those each side so we can take the back on and off really easily. So I've glued all the panels on and now with a bit of a wiggle I can just pull that off. There we go and it comes off on those pieces. The part's pretty strong inside because it's got that reinforcing piece and these as well which bridge between the red and blue sections. It's a pretty tight fit on there so that it doesn't fall off when the robot's walking around. That's my emergency stop button handily poking out through the shoulder. And the other hole there is for the other accessory, so look out for that in the future. So I'm much happier with the overall profile on the side now. We've got the back on, so uh, basically it covers up that actuator. There isn't a weird dip in the back anymore. So I'm pretty sure the proportions look all right. So I've only made some minor improvements in this episode, but um, I'm really very happy with the uh, motion that we've got there. So uh, that's worked out really well, and the eyes I'm not too unhappy with. We will improve those in the future, as I say. Uh, but I'm pretty happy now with the cosmetics, and having that shoulder mount is very important for a future episode. The next time, I think I'm going to put something in the right arm there, so that we can have multiple other accessories. And if you've seen the new Spider-Man film, you'll know there's other things that he has in the suit besides web shooters. So that's something we're going to put in that hand next time. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. And also, it's really important to say that all my projects are funded through Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me, all my videos early, and almost daily sneak peeks and pictures. All right, that's all for now.